G'day, Stu here from UAB Futures and welcome to another episode of Tech Tuesday where every Tuesday we go through, we look at some new, interesting or just different technology in the FPV and drone racing scene. So today, what we're going to be looking at are these. These are the triple feed patches. I've got two different versions. We're going to stick them on the bench and these are used for our FPV goggles to get better reception. And the interesting thing about these ones, they can jump between right hand polarised and also left hand polarised. So we'll talk a little bit more about it on the bench and then also we'll do a bit of a side by side comparison. I've got two right here. The real ACC version and also the Farvi version, two exact same DVR recordings and find out which one's right for you and uh, if you want to get one. Anyway, let's stick onto the bench and get started. Alrighty, here they are on the bench and before we jump in, you know, and have a look at what we get and how they work, you might be thinking, Stuart, what's a patch antenna, let alone a triple feed patch antenna and how does that help my FPV flights? Well, a lot of times, I'm going to put these to the side, we're using goggles like this that have diversity and what a patch antenna lets us do, it lets us mix and match our antennas to suit our needs so we can put one on here on our diversity modules. So say on this side we've got our patch hooked up and that's going to give us really nice reception in a beam, so flying out anywhere where you're flying in this sort of area you're going to get great reception. And then on the other one we're going to put something like an omnidirectional which won't get quite as far as the beam uh, or the patch antenna but it will get better at better reception you know just sort of flying around in any sort of direction. But let's put those to the side, let's jump in now and talk about these bad boys right here and why they're so special. So the first part, look, they can jump between a left hand and right hand polarization. Now, why is that important? Well, you know, when we're all flying around, a lot of people have trouble with channels bleeding into one another. If there's not enough sort of frequency spacings between them, and it can be quite difficult. You might be getting some interference from some fellow pilots. Well, if everyone I know flies around on right hand polarized and they've got a right hand polarized antenna on their quad and then they're getting that reception on their patch, this bad boy, if all your mates are flying around with right hand polarized, you can put a left hand polarized antenna on your quad, hook this thing up to left hand polarized, and then you should be getting a lot less interference. Well, that's the theory anyway. And the reason this one's special, look, there is right hand and left hand polarized patches out there, but this is the first one that really lets you choose, you know, off the, off the bat, do you want it to be left hand or right hand polarized? And very easy to switch that. Now to switch it, all you've got to do, you get this little dummy lead and say, if we want right hand polarized, that's where we'd screw this into. So this is where we're going to screw our little adapter here. So this is the part that goes into our goggles. So the right hand polarized feed and we'll put a little dummy terminator load on the left hand polarized as well. So there we go. This is now a right hand polarized patch and to change it if you want a left hand polarized patch you just switch these two around. Now I've got two versions here and usually look clones you know some people get a little bit touchy but this isn't actually a clone. Well it is it's pretty much a copy but uh, that's allowed because this is actually open source but uh, I would say if you want to sort of support the people who came up with these go and check out the far views. I'm going to link all these down below. I think this one's like 20 bucks. This one's like 12 bucks. And there's even like an Omway, Om, Omway one, which look, I can't test because I don't have one. I think that one's like eight bucks or something pretty crazy at the moment. But if you want to support the people who sort of design this stuff, go and check out the Farview website. Now I would say you are paying a little bit for quality. The reception we're going to jump into a little bit. We're going to do a side by side comparison. But when you get this one, you get everything comes like this. You get everything you need. When I got this one, this is the cheaper one, you know, the 12 buck one. I got this, you know, which is fine. That's okay. But I didn't get the dummy load. And without putting that dummy load on, it's not going to function correctly. So I'll link a dummy load down below as well, but uh, you know, a Terminator. But that's a bit of a shame because if you're going to buy one of these patches or the real ACC version, they should at least include the right hardware. But I'm going to say with the Farview one, spot on. It comes perfect, ready to rock and roll. Anyway, what we should do, let's stick it on the scales and find out how much it weighs. Here are my scales off here, putting it on with the dummy load. So this one's coming in at about 19 grams. And then I'm going to keep the dummy load and put this bad boy on there. This one's coming in at about 22 grams. So that's just because that one's got a bit of a longer, 23 grams, a bit of a longer wire. But I found I didn't really notice the weight whatsoever. So it's pretty light on the front of your face when it's hooked up to your goggles. Now look, they're meant to have a great axial ratio. They've got like a bit over nine decibels of gain on here. I'm gonna link both the specs down below for everything. If you wanna go check out the exact nitty gritty for me, let's go out and let's do a field test. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna have two pairs of goggles exactly the same, recording the one quad. One's gonna have the far view patch. One's gonna have the triple feed patch. We'll see, look, does it really make a difference? Does it matter which one you get? And then I'm gonna let you guys make up your mind and think, you know, is this the sort of patch that you'd like to check out? Anyway, let's cut out to the field and try them out in three, two, one. Right here, out here in the field, we're about to do a side-by-side -side comparison, trying to make it as, a, like, I guess, comparable as we can. We've both got a set of onways. We've got it on the same receiver. There's no other antennas coming into play. We're gonna be recording some DVR, putting them side-by-side. -side. I've got the real ACC version. Trev's got the far, far view version. So we're going to fly them out in a straight line, see how the reception goes, fly them around a bit and just give them a bit of a comparison and show you guys the DVR. All right, let's do it. Goggles down, Trev, 
and we'll uh, make sure we try and line up our goggles so they're facing the same direction. That's not the same direction. Lockie, can you, um, if we don't move our head, can you line us up so our antennas are both sort of pointing out that way? Thanks, mate. Uh, uh, this one needs to go a little bit. Uh, should be right. Alrighty, so here we are on board about to take off and look this was the best test that I could think of to sort of put these things head to head Get the two goggles two antennas and then sort of uh, give it a whirl rock and roll Anyway on board and the one on the left. That's the uh, the Favi version So that's with Trev's and then the one on the right. That's the real ACC version Now flying out in a straight line so you can see no dramas whatsoever And that's because we're in that beam so that beam we're going pretty slow Yeah, the flying's not exciting and I am going to link the whole DVR file at the end if you want to watch the whole thing back because I'm just going to try and edit this through and show you, some, show you some of the more exciting parts where we start to get some breakup. So you can see a few little flickers there. But yeah, the reason this is kind of impressive is because traditionally patches, look, that would be fine. But this one performed a lot better than even my Immersion RC or my TBS one. So I am going to be making the switch. Now in a moment, we're going to fly around and I'm going to show you what happens. We know when I was talking about that beam before. So you can see Trev's one on the left, I reckon, is getting a little bit more flicker than the real AC. AC real ACC version which is a you know was kind of surprising and you can see here this is what happens when you start to fly out of that beam so this is traditionally when your omnidirectional would come over the top and that would sort of take it with the diversity module you get that reception but when you're back in the beam you can actually go quite a long way so I think we go out that bush right around here going behind this this is where I thought there would be snow and uh, you get a little flicker but nothing really that you couldn't fly through so you know that static is more than flyable and that's where I started to get really surprised you know again here's a bit more flicker it looks like like the real ACC versions performing better which is which is crazy I don't I, I really can't explain that I'm not going to tell you which one's better I'm going to leave that guys up to you but in this test it looked like that one was performing better maybe Trev just moved his head too much but we did have Lockie there pointing at pointing us both in the same direction making sure we stayed on task so I am going to link all this down below. What really would have been nice uh, would have been if I could have tested the Omway patch as well. I didn't know that was out, and I definitely didn't know that it was eight dollars. But it would be pretty crazy to see, you know, what sort of re what sort of reception that you can get with something that's so cheap. So it'd be nice. Maybe I'll have to find another way that I compare all three. The nice way about this test was it was two recorders recording the one quad, so uh, the quad wasn't in different orientations. Anyway, doing some laps. What I'm going to do, I'm going to cut to some of the best parts of the DVR where we started to get a bit more snow, and then we'll wrap it up. And I will link this full. DVR, I'll play it at the end of this video anyway for anyone who wants to watch the whole thing. So here I guess we're punching it up, uh, you know, it's not too good above you because that beam also works vertically and then uh, we'll cut out some other snowy parts, so we're behind us right now, so that's why the reception looks so terrible. Let's cut out some other parts. Boop! Radio, so uh, jumping over here, this is where there is a little bit more snow, this is probably where we got the most snow. We're right on the edge of the beam, going through some thicker trees, some more foliage, and you know, anything with moisture in it really affects your FPV signal, so that's why it's getting a little bit snowy. But overall, I was really blown away with the quality, and that's why I'm going to be making the switch. I don't think they look as cool, it was a bit more daggy, I'll probably be shorting the coax, coaxial on my real ACC version but I was more than impressed. And you know, I know Trev really likes his Favi version as well, but what do you guys think? Which one would you get? I'm not gonna tell you which one to buy, which one not to buy. It'd be great if you guys could support the people who actually designed this. So uh, remember, I'll link everything down below and I'd love to know which one are you gonna get? The real ACC version for 12 bucks, the official version, I guess the people who designed it, give them a bit of a, a bit of a shout out for like the $20. Or if you've got some experience with the $8 Onway version, I'd love to know how that goes as well. What about yours? Mine was pretty good. Mine was better. Well, we don't know because we're going to have to compare them. I, but that was, I can't believe how that's the first time we've actually tried it with just one antenna. And uh, very surprised how actually far we went with hardly any dropout at all. Yeah, I was. Well, there's no dropout, there's a couple of flickers. That was yeah, yeah, yeah. So. It's still more than, well, I don't know about your mine was more than flyable. Oh, easy flyable. The whole yeah. time, the only time it got the snowiest was we we're over some bushes over there, but. It seemed like we were talking it through and you were getting the same sort of stuff. Yeah, but, yeah. it's still flyable. So, it, uh, yeah, it's kind of crazy. Cause no, di no diversity, which is pretty impressive. Yeah, anyway. Especially when you see how bushy this is. This is the Aussie bush, guys. and uh, Yeah, it was really good. Yeah, All right, well, I guess I'll get it home, compare the DVR, and these guys would have made their mind up. Yeah. Right. Thanks, Trev. I've got no quad on, I don't know why I put my goggles down. So there it is, there's my Tech Tuesday look at these triple feed patches. I'm a big fan, I'm going to be jumping over, I used to use my Immersion RC patch and also a TBS patch occasionally, but I find these things, I was really blown away with the results, especially without that goggle antenna, without the omnidirectional. So uh, I'm a big fan of these, and especially if you're going to go out to the field and there's a lot of pilots and you want to jump over to left hand polarised, 
having something like this is a great option. Anyway, hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Drop those comments down below. What else do you want to see on Tech Tuesdays? Subscribe for more FPV-related content, and as always, happy flying!